How Integrity Impacts Your Health by Professor Nigel McLennan. What role do integrity and honesty play in our physical and mental well-being? What are the consequences when integrity and the mechanisms of trust are absent or break down? How can you protect your integrity to protect your health? To understand the role of integrity in well-being, it is necessary to explore intra- and interpersonal honesty and integrity. People can be honest with themselves and not with others, or vice versa. People can be honest with themselves in one or more contexts, but not in others. People can be honest with their loved ones in some regards, but not in others. They can tell one lie to their loved ones and a different lie to work colleagues and a third lie to their sports charity or community colleagues. People can be collectively honest or collectively duplicitous. In short, every conceivable combination of honesty and dishonesty seems to exist across every type of relationship. Let's start by looking at the impact of intrapersonal honesty, self-honesty, and interpersonal honesty on health. When a physician asks most people, how much alcohol do you consume per week? They know that almost everyone downplays their consumption. Speak to a few physicians and ask them to tell you what they do in their minds when someone says, Oh, about five glasses of wine during the week and four over the weekend. Some physicians will double or even treble that figure in their mind and act accordingly. Most people know that drinking too much alcohol is harmful to health, that less is safer. It is difficult for people to admit to doing something they know is bad for them, especially to the person whom they know has responsibility for helping them to stay healthy. In this situation, a lack of integrity has a negative impact on the person's health. They will, in all probability, continue drinking too much alcohol with all the inevitable consequences. Not so people with self-integrity, self-responsibility. They will answer truthfully. If they are consuming too much alcohol, they will commit to reductions and honour that commitment. Integrity and body weight. Should we expect the same when it comes to maintaining a healthy body weight? Integrity and body weight. Should we expect the same when it comes to maintaining a healthy body weight? Yes. The higher a person's self-integrity and self-responsibility, the more they will be honest with themselves about their body weight. If it creeps up, the high self-integrity person will commit to doing something about it and return themselves to a healthy weight. Integrity and mental health. You can see the same pattern of behaviour in mental health too. People who have integrity and especially self-honesty, will admit when they are struggling with their mental health. What does that mean? That they usually admit and act before their mental health deteriorates further. They will ask for help, guidance and suggestions, input and counsel from friends, relatives and colleagues. They will nip any problem in the bud, address it before it becomes more serious. Integrity, especially self-honesty, is essential for good mental health. Integrity, honesty and trust. Integrity, honesty and trust are intertwined. Honesty and integrity are key ingredients in the development of trust. Trust is earned when people behave with honesty and integrity. All seems clear. However, there are no clear or agreed definitions of honesty or integrity, or trust. For instance, does honesty mean always telling the truth to others? If so, we have another definitional problem. What is truth? Is it my truth? Your truth? A third party's truth? Is truth fact, perception, or opinion? If you are being honest, should you share a transient opinion with a loved one? 
whom you know may choose to feel bad about your comments? Is sharing such an opinion telling the truth? Is withholding that opinion telling a lie by omission? Does integrity mean having strongly held moral principles and sticking to those principles, whatever the consequences? You may be familiar with the aphorism, principles are for those who can afford them. Do most people hold their principles as immutable, or only until and unless they are paid enough to abandon them? History would suggest the latter, repeatedly. That means that integrity can be bought and sold and is not an absolute. What does it mean if you trust someone? Does it mean that you have an expectation that a person will do you no harm and keep their word to you? Our language contains confirmation that trust is not to be expected, such as in the phrase, no good deed goes unpunished. The next time you wonder why so many people walk by when they see someone in need of help, it is because they know that so many people before them have been harmed by trying to do the right thing. Countless people have been sued for, with the best of intentions, trying to help someone in need. Health and breaches of integrity, honesty and trust. What impact does it have on health, on the ability to trust, if someone of integrity tries to do the right thing and finds they are harmed by the people they sought to help? Every day, all over the world, there are vast numbers of court cases where one party claims that the other has breached their agreement and breached their trust. One or both parties started off expecting the other to be integrous. Yet, they have been harmed. Legal proceedings are known to damage mental and physical health in vast numbers of people. What is the impact on the well-being of integrity in groups? A person is trusted by a group to keep confidences, to keep secrets. If they do, they are seen as a person of integrity, honesty, and are, consequently, trusted. What if the confidences, the secrets that are expected to be kept, are of wrongdoing, serious and ongoing acts of illegality? If the person trusted keeps the criminal secrets, they will be lying by omission to those who have a duty to uphold the law. Those who have become silently complicit in the wrongdoing are expected by the criminals to be honestly dishonest. They are trusted to be untrustworthy and carry out their deceit with integrity. When does someone have integrity? Whether someone is deemed to have integrity or not depends on the motives of the person making the attribution. Over and over again, every day, we see scandals where huge numbers of people knew about illegalities and chose not to speak up. They were trusted to keep quiet about the illegality. Would the rest of the world think that being part of a conspiracy to conceal wrongdoing epitomized honesty, integrity, or trust? Of course not. Would the rest of the world understand why they chose to be silently complicit in the wrongdoing? Yes, for the same reasons that people walk by when seeing someone in need of help. The personal risk of speaking up is too great. The effect on well-being of being a person of integrity surrounded by deceit. What is the health effect of being integrous when surrounded by wrongdoers? The evidence seems to suggest that the person either leaves the deceitful organisation, or their mental health suffers, or they engage in cognitive dissonance to protect their mental health. Cognitive dissonance like this. I didn't do it. I can't do anything about it. No one will ever be able to prove I knew anything about it. Anyway, failing to report such crimes 
is not in itself a crime. So I'll carry on picking up my paycheck, look after my family and stay quiet. Do people compromise their integrity in real life to protect their health, their families? Only everywhere, every day, all the time. Think of the scandals in the post office, Enron, Jimmy Savile, Madoff, Shipman, Dieselgate, Volkswagen was the first to be detected, Wirecard, BBC, Oxfam, Partygate, Watergate, Cash for Questions, Bungs for Gongs, MPs Expenses Scandals, the list is very, very long. In every scandal, there were people who compromised their integrity for reasons of self-protection. People whose lack of integrity damages the well-being of others. Machiavellis, narcissists, sociopaths and psychopaths, MNSPSs, or the corrupt quartet, seem not to be detrimentally affected by their integrity deficits. Guilt requires self-insight into wrongdoing and necessitates a conscience and a moral compass. In the absence of both, even when they have been caught lying, members of the corrupt quartet will gaslight the person who has uncovered their deceit. If the gaslighting doesn't silence the challenger, MNSPSs will attack, and those attacks will escalate in seriousness until they are either rid of the challenger or they have destroyed them. Some people deceive their way to the top. We have seen it over and over again in politics. People will vote for the person who tells them the lies they want to hear. It always ends the same way. The deceitful politician is exposed for what they are, but not before they have done immeasurable harm. Lack of integrity harms the welfare of countries too. How much harm is done by people devoid of integrity? When integrity is absent or trust is destroyed, the consequences are almost always the same. Serious harm. The evidence seems to suggest that MNSPSs do vast psychological damage to large numbers of people over many years and seem to suffer no ill effects from so doing. At least that's how it seems. Why? MNSPSs would never want to appear to have any negative health consequences of their behaviour. They think that would appear weak and may be interpreted by others as just deserts. Corrupt people manipulate and gaslight their silent collaborators into believing that the words integrity, honesty and trust mean what they want. Trust and integrity to them are what they must secure from others to help cover up and conceal their wrongdoing and criminality. When people with a functioning conscience have been deceitful or silently complicit, they may experience guilt. We know that feelings of long-term guilt are detrimental to mental and physical health. What is the health impact on those subjected to retaliation for having integrity? Where someone has been a whistleblower of one or more persons directing organisational wrongdoing, the hero of integrity is almost always subject to false allegations, attacked, intimidated, defamed and reputationally destroyed. The more reasonable, honest and empathetic a person is, the more they seem to suffer harm at the hands of the corrupt quartet. 85% of whistleblowers who are subjected to retaliation end up with serious mental health problems and never work again. Being a person of integrity and challenging those who are devoid of integrity is extremely dangerous to well-being. What are the effects on people who have suffered abuse of any kind in childhood? Again, the impact of the betrayal of trust and the subsequent denials and false counter-accusations is devastating. The perpetrators have doubled down on the harm they have done to their victims by claiming that they are suffering from false memories. For victims of such horrendous breaches of integrity, 
the risk of depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress injury, and risky and reckless behaviour, relationship difficulties, the inability to trust, are just some of the vast catalogue of psychological and moral injuries experienced. Frankly, child abuse destroys the victim's mental and physical health. It has been described as soul murder. The high damage and low recovery figures are similar to those who have experienced whistleblower retaliation. Does integrity enhance well-being? On a more positive note, integrity is linked to better health and life outcomes. Research into character strength of honesty and integrity, CSHI, and its impact on health demonstrates that people who score highest on tests of CSHI have an 18% lower risk of lung disease and 11% lower risk of depression, report lower limitations in mobility and have fewer difficulties in daily living in the long term. Those findings were robust and independent of prior factors. In short, in the majority of life instances, honesty and integrity are good for health. People who grow up in an environment where they can trust those around them have much better life chances. They learn to have self-integrity. What does that mean? When they have eaten too much and put on a few pounds, they will look themselves in the mirror, admit that they have overindulged and resolve right there and then to do something about it. They honour their commitments to themselves and others, which in turn gives them better relationships. They are people who, when they say they will meet someone at 1100 hours at a specific location, will be early or on time. Why? They have given their word, and keeping their word to themselves and others matters to them. Why? They know that the way a person does something is the way the person does everything. Keeping their word to themselves gives them certainty that when they want to achieve something, they will take the requisite steps. They will not make excuses, even to themselves. People who have the enviable combination of self-responsibility and self-integrity are almost always healthier and more successful. That is certainly the case with the people I have been honoured to coach. Indeed, it is one of the biggest predictors of successful performance enhancement from coaching. What steps will you take to adopt self-responsibility and self-integrity in order to enhance your well-being?